Welcome to the Ignite Christian Business Podcast. Today's episode is part of a special series leading up to Ignite 22, an Ignite Christian Business Conference taking place July 28th and 29th at the Beardmore Event Center in Omaha, Nebraska. Ignite 22 is for Christians with a passion for business, leadership, and serving others. Get your tickets today at ignite-cb.com. Today's host is Rich Trigger Bontrager of Rock the Stage. Let's dive right in as Rich sits down with Eric M. Johnson, President and Managing Partner of Arnold Motor Supply and the Merrill Company. Eric Johnson's with me today. Eric, thanks for taking the time to talk about Ignite. I know you could not be with us last year at Ignite. What did you hear as you missed out on the first opportunity? And now we're ready for year two. Yeah, you're right. It, uh, I was disappointed that I couldn't. I had a, uh, a previous engagement. I was out of town um, out of the state during last year's event, but I have had uh, a couple conversations about it, gone back and looked at some of the video of uh, what transpired last year. Um, it was very disappointing to me that I couldn't make it because I think it's it's something that I think is very important. Uh, I think the, uh, the business community somewhat is a uh, an underserved community, perhaps, by the church. And it's kind of exciting to see what uh, what's happening, both from the perspective of getting business leaders together to, uh, you know, network and, and talk to each other. And, you know, the, the iron sharpens iron thing, of course, is always true. But I think it's also exciting from, uh, you know, maybe some younger people who are just starting to get into the business space and are looking for some uh, some people who have maybe done some trailblazing, gone before, a little bit of mentoring type thing. So I think there's a lot of opportunity in both of those scenarios. So I'm very excited for it. Well, that's one of the areas that Greg and I spent a lot of time in this off year talking about. We do want to be mentors, influencers to the next generation leaders. Uh, as a former pastor myself, I always love next generation leadership. So we're intentionally trying to reach into that, Eric. Why do you think it's so vital that the church do a better job of that in the business sector with the younger generation? Well, I think, uh, you know, the business sector really is a almost an, an entity in and of itself. It's um, and so so too many times in the past, I think we took people who were maybe had a, a, a heart for the Lord and a gift for communication and, and had the ability to convey a message. And we steered them towards ministry as in behind a pulpit. Yeah. And I think we've seen a, a real shift over the past several years. I, maybe decade is too long. I, I guess I couldn't put a time frame on it, but I think we're seeing a move towards, you know, you can be a minister in the workplace and not just a, a minister behind a pulpit. And I think that's a big message that maybe needs a further development, further unpacking, because I, I think we're kind of at the beginning of it still, even though it's it's been going on for, for several years, I think there's still a long way to go, a lot that we can, can do to draw that out of people who are in the business space so that we can uh, minister to each other a little bit. Marketplace ministry has always been around you're right, though. It needs to be amplified and it needs to be elevated to a higher level within the church and outside the church. That's one of the goals of the Ignite Business Conference. The other one is pandemic has shut us down. A lot of fear, a lot of businesses have coiled back. Uh, and we're also trying to bring light and hope into the fact of as Christians, we don't have to be Bible thumpers. We don't have to have the track out on the counter, but we do need to be lights in our community. What do you think about that concept of rebuilding our cities just by being good quality Christians that run good quality businesses. Right. I think, you know, the whole concept of being light is really, I think there's a whole lot there that fits perfectly with this, this topic. If you look at when Jesus went to the Sermon on the Mount and he got up in front of all the people there and his disciples among them, and he said, told them that, hey, you are the light of the world and, and you're the salt of the earth. And that's a, that's a heavy message to hear from the man that you've just recently figured out is the Messiah. Yeah. Um, and I can imagine if, if I'm one of the disciples, I'm sitting there thinking, how do I do this? What, what, what does this mean? I'm so, that's, a, that's a lot. Yeah. And, it, you know, it, the chronology of the Gospels is kind of hard to put together sometimes. But I would, you know, it, it seems to be about a year later, he's, he's standing in the temple and uh, he declares that, that he himself is the light of the world. And 
you know, if I'm one of the disciples there who's been wrestling in my mind for the last year about uh, how am I supposed to be the light of the world? And then he declares, hey, guess what? I'm the light of the world. That's a little bit of a relief that, okay, all I have to do is reflect him. And uh, I don't have to, to be the origin of the light. So I think that's a lot of what we're doing is getting together, learning ways to how can we be more effective as that light um, without taking the burden on ourselves to, to say, I have to have all the answers. I don't. I just have to be the one that's reflecting his light wherever I'm going. So I think light is a, is a perfect analogy, especially right now, like you said, it, you know, it's a time of a lot of uncertainty, a lot of chaos, a lot of shaking. Um, and so I think uh, that that's a very appropriate analogy. I think I should have you do all the rest of the interviews. <laughs> you said that so well. I have a, a love for the book of Nehemiah from throughout the Old Testament. I have a love for the visionary leadership of Nehemiah, of how he saw the pain. It broke his heart. He prayed, he prayed, and he prayed more. And then he caught a vision for what could happen in the broken down city after he scouted it out. This idea of bringing the neighbors together to rebuild the walls, literally Nehemiah, they're fighting for each other. They're doing brick by brick together. And it was community by community, sector by sector. How do you think that translates into our world today? Is, is that a viable way to rebuild our cities? It, it's really interesting because, you know, Nehemiah is a, a book, of course, I was familiar with. But uh, ever since uh, hearing that that was going to be the theme of Ignite, I, I've actually gone through and read through it. A couple times just to you know kind of get the the scope and also jumping into Ezra since they're so yeah. closely intertwined. But you know, a couple of things that really stand out in Nehemiah is a the the the, uh, the burden that that he had when it talks about how he wept yeah. for the nation. Um, and you know, sometimes I wonder if as much as we pray for our nation, if we really even have that burden developed yet. If God is still working through us to, to take us even to a deeper place of, of, uh, of having a burden for our nation, um, for our cities, because, um, you know, you see the, the passion that he had yeah. for the, the task that, that the Lord had laid on his heart. It, uh, it's a little bit humbling, but it's also just a real interesting story about perseverance in the face of whether it's social or political um, opposition, you know, there was some, some fairly powerful people who did not want to see them succeed. Three particular and, people kept hounding them and saying, no, and we will play around with you and throw wrenches in the system to slow you down. They were very intentional. Exactly. And uh, so I think it's a, a great picture of perseverance in the face of that. And, uh, you know, it's really, I think, telling the fact that they, they had a sword in one hand and a and tool in the other. And, yeah. you know, so they were both prepared to fight and prepared to build um, at the same time. And, uh, you know, the other thing I think is interesting is, is how people were assigned the section of the wall that was close to their own house. Very neighborhood and, specific, very neighborhood driven, wasn't it? Exactly. Yep. And so there's a, maybe a lesson there about um, you know, yes, we, we want to affect the nation and we want to affect our community, but let's start next door. Let's start right where you are and, and uh, pick up what you have available to you right there and, and do what you can. Um, well, coming up at the end of July, the Ignite Conference, what's your hope this year? What are you coming in and wanting to maybe to either hear from God, experience? What are your dreams personally on this? I would really like to see it be part of a greater whole. Um, you know, I think that uh, there is a general movement that's happening across the body of Christ. And, um, you know, I think an event like this is great as a standalone thing, but I really want to see it as something that's part of a bigger context. That's part of something that that's one piece of a larger puzzle, if you will that uh, you know, we can start seeing some synergy between what God is doing in Omaha at the end of July and what he's doing in other cities and other places all across the country. Um, as time goes, I, I'd like to see some momentum building um, towards you know, seeing some, some change in our nation and some uh, 
some establishment of what what God is wanting to do across this country. When when you come to Ignite, Greg and I have a couple announcements coming your way. I'm not going to give it all away, but you got to come and hear about it because there is plans to grow and expand. And there was another movement that once got started by a coach called Promise Keepers, and it was small and it grew into a global movement the same way you're describing. So, Eric, I look forward to seeing you in person at Ignite. Look forward to having everyone else come and join us. It's the end of July. We'll have links on the videos here so you can register and join us. Also, if you'd like to be a sponsor, help really pave the way to have this continue to grow year after year. And as Eric just said, on a larger scale with other movements just like this, please ask information. We will follow up with you and get you involved with Ignite 2022. Until then, I'm Rich Bontrager, and we'll see you on the next Ignite podcast interview. We hope that you've enjoyed today's episode of the Ignite Christian Business Podcast. Are you a business leader, owner, or employee with a passion for excellence in stewarding your business for Jesus? Then we would like to invite you to Ignite 22, an Ignite Christian Business Conference July 28th and 29th at the Beardmore Event Center in Omaha, Nebraska. You can get your tickets and book your hotel today at ignite-cb.com. The goal of this event will be to encourage us all to grow our faith and our businesses, to become a part of a network of leaders from a myriad of vocations, and build lasting relationships as business leaders within the body of Christ. Speakers will include strategist, futurist, and thought leader, Dr. Lance Wallnow, Kevin Jessup, president of Global Strategic Alliance, Jerry Pereira of the Laden Preservation Group, pastors Hank and Brenda Kuhneman of Lord of Hosts Church, health freedom advocate, Dr. Ben Tapper, mindset disruption strategist, Eric L. Dunavant, chief marketing officer, Michael Lebrod, and Desiree Bouyer, president of Extreme Recognition. Special music and worship will be provided by multi-Grammy-nominated members of the Grand Ole Opry, the Isaacs, and Jasmine Christmas Brady of Regeneration Nashville, who provided the intro and outro music for the Ignite podcast. Other special guests will take the stage, and the event will be amazing. It was made possible by partnering with Patriot Mobile, XR Outfitters, and many other amazing businesses. Thank you for listening, and remember, Jesus is in business. Is he in yours?